it was a revolution, of course, it was a revolutionary time and it changed the world. Uh, it was the end of the Cold War, it was the end of our nuclear uh, terror. Both sides were equally terrified of, of the nuclear weapon and it was a great liberation for Eastern Europe. And for everybody in the West, of course, that was a that was a tremendous thing to happen. Mm. Uh, and really, the prime mover in all that, the man I think, was responsible for for making that process happen without bloodshed, was Mikhail Gorbachev, who died yesterday. In the last few years of Mikhail Gorbachev's rule saw tumultuous change. As the Cold War ended, the Berlin Wall fell and the Soviet Union eventually fell apart. Sir Roderick Braithwaite had a front row seat to history being made. He was in Moscow as a British ambassador from 1988 to 1992. And we can speak to him now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, what is your kind of standout memory of that time? There was so much happening, so much change in such a small period of time. Well, it was a it was a revolution, of course. It was a revolutionary time and it changed the world. Uh, it was the end of the Cold War. It was the end of our nuclear uh, terror. Both sides were equally terrified of, of the nuclear weapon. And it was a great liberation for Eastern Europe. And for everybody in the West, of course, that was a that was a tremendous thing to happen. Mm. Uh, and really, the prime mover in all that, the man I think, was responsible for for making that process happen without bloodshed, was Mikhail Gorbachev, who died yesterday. And I think that uh, you've had a lot of comments uh, from various people about how his policies. Um, in the end failed and how he is now reviled in his country for, as they see it, uh, destroying the other superpower, a great power, destroying their position in the world, their economy, their political system, and reducing them really to something close to famine in the beginning of 1992. That's what was happening. Mm. People were dying of famine in Russia. And they look back on that, of course, with very great resentment. But um, I believe and hope that Gorbachev will be um, admired in his own country in time because of what he did. Mm. I think, I, of course, it was a very exciting time for me. We were there during the coup against Gorbachev. We were on the streets. My wife was on the barricades uh, at the time the shooting took place in the night. But the thing that I think I remember is what a remarkable person Gorbachev was as a man. Um, he was a he was warm, he was lively, he was highly intelligent, mm. and I think, although it's an absurd thing to say, perhaps about a former head of the Soviet Communist Party, I think he was a nice man. He mm. was a decent man. He was a warm-hearted man, and I I. Um, personally felt very warm towards him. Yes, well, Margaret Thatcher felt warm towards him as well. She said, this is a man we can do business with. And I mean, I, you know, I grew up at that time and I, I remember um, thinking that he looked exactly, well, not how I thought someone like that would look. He was kind of smi smiley, he was kind of avuncular. Um, but can you explain for us, um, Sir Roderick, how... Um, you know, he had an idea of what he wanted to do with Russia. He wanted to modernise it. He wanted to make it more open, etc. But but what came from that was, you talked about the famine in 1992 and the breakup of the Soviet Union. Did Do you think that he expected, suspected that that would happen or was he surprised by what happened? I think he, he, he certainly didn't set out for that to happen. Mm. He was surprised by it. It wasn't what he expected. Um, I think that... Uh, one has to keep in the forefront of my mind that he was chosen to be head of the Soviet Communist Party by the old men who were running the place at the time because they had understood that the system was not working, that mm. it was in serious trouble for at least a decade. The economy had been getting more and more wonky. Uh, domestic opinion had been getting uh, more and more restive and uh, their hold over the enemy they'd had their failed war in Afghanistan their hold over 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 Eastern Europe was uh, also beginning to look 
problematic. And they elected, they chose Gorbachev to put all that right, to put the Soviet Union back on its feet. So he took over a, a, a huge problem. And he he didn't know how to reform the economy. And I don't think one should blame him for that because nobody know, knew how do you reform a, a, a state economy which is falling apart on a continental scale. No, none of the clever people in the West who later came to tell the Russians how to do it had any more clue than the Russians themselves. Mm. So it was a problem. I, I mean, I think the collapse of the Soviet Union was inevitable, whoever was in charge. I think the, the thing about Gorbachev was that, that it collapsed without bloodshed. And I think that is a, a huge achievement. He gave his people democracy, uh, which they still remember. I mean, I have a, a, f a friend of mine sent me a, an email the other day from Moscow saying he never expected to be living again behind the iron, behind an iron curtain. Mm. I mean, what has happened uh, under Putin has been, of course, uh, I think, a disaster for Russia. And uh, Putin is popular because he's helped to restore their self-respect after that humiliation, but at a huge price, which they will realise. Do we know um, or can we... Can you can we speculate in an informed way? Can you speculate in an informed way about what um, each other, what they thought of each other, Putin and Gorbachev? Well, I I, I don't know. I mean, there've been slight whiffs of uh, of information have come out. I think the answer to that may be something like this: When Putin came to power and promised to restore Russia's self respect. At, but said that he wished to do that in cooperation with the West, that Russia was a European country, mm. that he was determined to go on promoting democracy and the rule of law. I think Gorbachev welcomed all aspects of that. I mean, he wanted Russia's position to be restored, just like all other Russians did. And he believed that Putin perhaps did intend to press ahead with some kind of democratic reform. Mm. I think he was... Um, seriously disappointed by what happened obviously and every now and again he made very discreetly um critical remarks but he he rather i think um i think prudently and sensibly and perhaps rightly didn't set himself up as an opposition figure mm. and an opposition to he, he was too old and he was too unpopular it wouldn't have made sense yes um so roderick braithwaite thank you very much for talking to us uh, he was a British ambassador to Russia from 1988 to 1992, the key timeline, really.